What's up everyone? Welcome back to another Beyond Crazy video. I am super excited. So about a year ago today, I was sick and I could not participate in our church's chili cook-off. I love the chili cook-off. Even before I converted to the LDS religion, I always went to the chili cook-off and the trunk or treat with Crystal and the kids and just eating the chili was the best part. Imagine 20, 30 different chilies made by different individuals. You get to try them and then you can just eat as much as you want of the one that you like. It's amazing. Now, I didn't get to participate last year. Thank you to Chris and Hannah for stepping up and doing it in my place. But this year, I'm feeling good enough. Let's make some chili. Let's make the best chili. And let's win this thing. So the start of this chili is just like the start of any other good chili. Its base is going to be bacon, and then the predominant meat inside it's going to be brisket. So we pick up the brisket. This is a prime brisket, not because we needed a prime brisket, only because this is all they had available. It's in chili, guys. You can do prime or select. It really doesn't make that much of a difference. I'm gonna go ahead and just score this open. And for this recipe, we're actually not going to be using the entirety of the brisket because the, that would make an absurd amount. But also, we're gonna be separating this brisket. This half of the brisket is known as the flat. Imagine you lay it anytime you're laying it on the fat cap, okay, the side is more flat, whereas this is coming more to a point, if you see, it's more of a point at the top of it. So this is the point of the brisket, and this is the flat. We're only going to need the flat, and then we're gonna save the point for probably a smoke or something else. One of my sisters has been sending me this smoked brisket mac and cheese literally like every single day, so I'm gonna have to get that done sometime this week. She's literally right here. Smoked brisket mac and cheese. It looks so good. So this is, this will be your brisket, just give me some time on it. Just come in with a super sharp knife, guys, and go ahead and just separate this. Okay, try not to saw through the meat if you can. This is gonna get separated out. This is the beautiful point. And then this is what we're actually gonna be working with. Ordinarily speaking, you'd wanna go ahead and trim this off. You can trim a little bit because this is a decent amount of fat. You can probably trim it to like about half, but a lot of that fat is gonna render off. You're gonna be cooking this for almost five hours, so don't worry too much about it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut these very similarly to a very thick piece of bacon. So I'm gonna come across here. Keep in mind, guys, if you're not using a sharp knife, get a serrated blade and saw through it if you don't have the ability to sharpen your knives. It's extremely dangerous to be doing this with a dull knife, okay? So you Use a sharp one. So we've got them all cut down into slices. Now we got our big bacon. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn these sideways and then I'm gonna take these down into half to one inch cubes. So you'll notice that it's at a tail end. So these pieces towards the end, these are just what we want. This is perfect. These pieces up towards the tops. Don't worry about separating fat. It's all gonna go inside the same place. Just like I said, just small cubes. So all this cube meat is going to go straight into a big bowl. So now I'm gonna treat this as a traditional steak. So it's just gonna be salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. We're gonna make sure we really, really generously give this as much coating as we can without taking away all of the liquid. So I'll show you guys exactly what that looks like. Got my onion powder and garlic powder here. Just keep in mind that a lot of this flavor that we're adding is going to be building all that flavor on the bottom of our chili pan. Really don't be scared to give it a good amount of seasoning. Yeah. We're gonna take that much bacon, nine pieces. We are gonna finally, finally dice this up best we can. I need a knife. Okay, microwave. Urgh. Have a cool microwave, they say. It'll be fun, they say, until it <laughs> goes out just based on you moving your leg across it. You want some bacon? You want some bacon, don't you, Daddy? All right, now that we have our bacon diced up, we are gonna bring it to the pan while the pan is cool. Meat in. We do not wanna wait for the pan to heat up before we add the bacon. We're trying to render the fat out of it. We're not trying to go crazy. And we're looking at about 80% heat, so medium high heat. We're gonna let that sit for about five minutes. All right, the bacon has released all of the fat that we needed to release. We have a nice layer of fat. The bacon's about half done, but if we leave it in there, it's just gonna get overcooked and it's gonna be nasty. So we're gonna pull the bacon right now. Make sure to use a uh, spoon with some holes in it so you can keep the fat. Now I know what you're wanting to say. You're wanting to say, just dump it all in there and start it browning. But the problem is if we put all of our brisket into the pan, it's gonna overcrowd, the meat's gonna turn gray, it's not gonna get that nice sear on it that we're looking for. So we're just gonna do like a handful at a time. So they don't stack up because you want them to get that done. You're gonna wanna make sure to move it around. Basically what we're doing is flash frying the meat for like a minute or so, but we're wanting to get a nice color on the outside of them. Oh yeah, it looks beautiful. Right here. That's what we're looking for, a nice 
good sear on the outside, but we don't want to overcook them either. All right, our first set's done, let's get them out. So we're just gonna set them aside. All right, now our next handful. Now we're gonna repeat that same process until all of the brisket has been seared and get it out onto the plate, and we'll show you what we're doing next. So now the meat's all pulled off and everything, I'm just gonna go ahead. This is all still on a low heat. I'm gonna turn that up to about medium. I'm gonna introduce these, and then I'm gonna reintroduce the bacon at the same time. Just because all of our brisket pulled up all of that fat and everything that we were hoping to use with the onions. So it's not a big deal. Luckily we didn't cook the bacon all the way through. So that's gonna get added right now. And I'm also going to throw in a couple of cloves of garlic through this press. We're gonna let these cook down until they're just about translucent and once I stop crying about it. <laughs> The smell is amazing. I'm in heaven. I'm just sitting here taking in. So the way I always have done chili is I really like rustic chili with no beans. This is a 28 ounce can of tomatoes whole. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna come through and just smashing just the tomatoes. I'm leaving most of the shape and everything cause that's gonna what's gonna make it rustic. But I'm literally just gonna push my thumbs through the entirety just like that. And that'll naturally break up inside of our chili while still allowing it to have that nice consistency. It is now mise en place style. We've done it, everything is set. It's time to throw everything together and get ready for some beautiful chili. We've got this base right now. It's soaked up all of our roux from the bottom. There's nothing on the bottom of this pan. All of the flavor that's been cooked into the bacon through the brisket is all inside of these onions now. It's gonna be delicious. This is all ready for me to go ahead and reincorporate in. So I'm gonna add in all of our brisket meat, beautifully cooked. I'm gonna come in with our can of crushed tomatoes. This is Mexican style chili powder. We're not going to overwhelm it. We're only gonna use two tablespoons. Ground thyme, I'm gonna use four tablespoons. And then cumin as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do a tablespoon and a half of cumin. And then I'm gonna top it off with one quart of beef broth. So I went ahead and de-seeded three jalapenos, diced those up. I'm just gonna throw those inside the top of it. I'm gonna give it a nice stir. I'm gonna put this heat on medium and we're gonna run it for about four and a half hours. Make sure you're stirring it probably about every 30 to 45 minutes. At some point during the move, I went to go help Howling move after we threw all this on. And at some point, I don't know if someone thought it was too high or we don't know if it was the actual heat, but at some point during today, the heat got turned down. So in traditional crazy pieces fashion, we're in a rush to get this thing done seconds before the competition. We've got the heat blasted on this. It's thickening up, but it's yeah, more it's like a thicker. soup. It's more like a soup right now, but we're getting there. This meat's gonna start breaking down naturally. I'm just gonna crank the heat on it, and uh, we're gonna stay and pray. <laughs> Good. Good. All right, so we ended up transferring the uh, chili to this crock pot. We did that so that we could keep it warm. Now we did have a slight problem with the cook. So it was cooking on the stove. We had it on a low heat and it was simmering beautifully. Somebody at some point came by and turned it off. And I'm not sure why they did that, but turned it back on, but we turned it up a little bit to get the heat back up and then I spaced it. And unfortunately, a large portion of the chili ended up getting burned, but there was still some left. So we put what was left, what was good into the crock pot. And as you can see, it all got ate. We did not win. We ended up being late to the chili cook-off because we were trying to figure out, okay, how do we salad just, I'm sorry I didn't record a lot earlier. It was pretty chaotic. We were trying to get out the door so we could make the chili cook-off, but it ended up tasting really good. We will have to make it again and we will do it better the next time. I would say it would be a lot easier. So once you've gotten everything to the point where you're cooking for four hours, I say throw it in a crock pot for four hours on high or low or whatever you wanna do, or if you can go longer. That way you don't have to watch it as much because it won't burn in the crock pot and you won't have to stir it as much. When it was on the stove, we had to stir it. And we have gas burners, so they work really well. It's a lot of heat. It's an amazing thing. We will post the recipe in the description. I apologize for the last two videos. I've been really bad at that. I am gonna go back and add those recipes. So if you guys wanna try them, definitely give them a try. Please give us a follow, a like, a subscribe, whatever platform you're on, it really helps us out. We love you guys. We'll catch you on the next one.